Joining us right now to talk about everything that's happening is Rafter CEO and Berkshire Hathaway Lead Director, Sue Decker. Sue, good to see you. Great to see you, Becky. Okay, let's talk about the issues that are out here, some of the serious issues. ESG has been a huge issue for lots of pension funds and others who have been involved in kind of pushing many different companies to disclose about more climate change. Um, there have been several uh, items added to the proxy where people are going to be voting, shareholders are going to be voting this quarter, including one from CalPERS that says it, it's going to be voting against Berkshire Direct First for failing to address climate risk. This has been a huge issue for the last several years. As lead director, what do you say back to shareholders and others who have raised issues with this because Berkshire is so decentralized? Yeah, it's a, it's a tough issue because, actually, I think Berkshire is on the right side of this um, debate and uh, has been a, a leading company <clears throat> in terms of disclosing information about the subsidiaries that do consume the largest carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. So Burlington Northern and Berkshire, Berkshire Energy are 90 percent of Berkshire's uh, energy consumption, and we have put out very dis uh, specific goals uh, for reduction that are industry-leading in, in their, each of their areas. So uh, the hard part, of course, is exactly what you raised, is that uh, the philosophy of Berkshire is to uh, push decision-making down to the individual businesses who are making the right decisions, but to roll this all up at a corporate level, uh, given how few other companies are involved in, in real greenhouse uh, emissions, is, is very costly. I think, the, in the end, what everyone would like is for clear rules to come out of the SEC on uh, what should be disclosed and to be applied uniformly and consistently. And I think that probably will happen in the next two years. I mean, you all have had conversations, I assume, with CalPERS and some of the others who have brought these issues. What's their point when they come back out? You don't fill the forms out the way we like them filled out? I think there's just sort of a, a checklist that happens that people are looking for certain uh, and spe spe specific guidance. And this is part of the problem is that different organizations are using different recommendations. And so the com companies don't have a a uniform way to apply these principles. So I actually am really proud of the disclosures that Berkshire makes, but they're at the subsidiary level rather than the corporate level. Uh, explain your job as lead director. Uh, Warren Buffett probably has more autonomy than any other CEO um, in the country at this point. Um, he's done things his own way, and he's done it for a very long time. Um, but as lead director, what are the things that you guys on the board are kind of talking about that you're looking at in terms of doing things differently? I, I, don't, I don't think that uh, being lead director changes the conversation. It's really just good governance to have a, uh, a, a party that's, rep, you know, is, is a lead director when you have the chair and the CEO is the same person. Uh, it makes sense to have somebody organize the thoughts uh, and have a, a confidential forum for directors if they would like it. But the issues are the issues that are uh, always present, which is succession, uh, what will happen in generations ahead with Berkshire. Um, risk management is really the job of... of of Warren, and uh, but the board as well uh, gets updated on that and tries to make sure that we're we're doing the right things. Let, let's talk a little bit about Rafter, your company, um, social media, and in terms of working as private social media networks for colleges and other people who are involved in this. Um, there have been so many questions on AI and how that's going to potentially change things, and we saw what happened with Chegg, um, which is different than what you guys are doing. They are doing something where they were selling subscription services to students to try and help with homework and going things along. But as somebody who understands technology so, so, so well, as somebody who understands social me media so well, what do you see with AI in terms of its usefulness and in terms of the risks that it might bring? Well, I'm, I'm very enthusiastic about the potential for AI. I mean, you can imagine some of the big societal problems that we're dealing with, including climate risk that you just talk, we were just talking about, that could be, um, you know, the, where we could learn at the scale that AI can, computation could, could help us. I mean, there's so many big societal problems that it could solve. But to your point, um, for something that big, you have to think about some of the unintended consequences. And clearly, there have been issues raised about um, jobs. Uh, the other side of that is there could be enormous productivity gains, uh, but there could be some serious job losses. Um, there's also the potential for misinformation, the same kinds of misinformation that we've been grappling with with social media in the past 10 years, but um, to an order of magnitude more. Uh, so there are, there are some downsides, and I, I'm, I'm in favor of, of regulation. I think if you, uh, I think almost everyone wishes that what we know now about the mental health crisis in the country and some of the downsides of, of, of the large technology companies and how they operate, especially with advertising models that really incent companies to drive attention and, at, at its worst, addiction. I think we wish that there were more guardrails today on how content is um, both created and, and distributed. 
Um, so I think there's some ideas out there, but it's, it's, I, I'm hoping that we get in front of it this time rather than reactive.